Good morning, everybody, and welcome to our live stream. Um, our another postgraduate live stream. This one is all about postgraduate research. So we are going to be talking about what you need to know, how to apply, and hopefully answering any questions. I'll be your host today. My name is Georgia, and I'm part of the business and law marketing team. So if you do have any questions, um, then please drop us a comment. Let us know you're watching, and we'll get those answered for you today. Now, I'm no expert on postgraduate re research, so I needed to bring someone in that was. So I'd like to introduce Dr. Lipka Decker. Hi, Lipka. Hello. Um, I'm good. I'm good. Thank you, Georgia. Good. Um, so Lipka is here for the next half an hour um, and she'll be answering any questions that you may have about postgraduate research. So please, if you are watching and you do have anything, um, then please let us know. Lipka, to start off with, can you just give us a little bit of an introduction as to who you are and sort of what your role is within DMU? Okay, uh, it's a, a very good morning, a good afternoon, wherever you are. And uh, like Georgia said, I'm Lipika, Dr. Lipika Dekka, uh, and uh, I am a senior lecturer on, of computer science within the Faculty of Computing, uh, Media and Engineering. And my role within DMU is uh, uh, I teach, I do research, and uh, why I'm here is because I'm the faculty head of research students. I look after strategically as well as administrative uh, things of looking into admissions of uh, postgraduate research students and also taking care of them as they enter the journey and right to the end of the journey. So every milestone, uh, see that it happens on time and uh, help you with any issues that come along and make uh, the experience of PGR research students as best as we can have it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that, Lipka. Um, so as I say, I did bring along an expert of postgraduate research with me today. Um, so to start off with, uh, Lipka, can you just give us sort of an introduction to what postgraduate research is um, and sort of the pathways that you would take to get to postgraduate research. Okay, I'll I'll uh, I'll do it as best as I can uh, in the in the limited time that we have. Uh, so to be able to do postgraduate research, now postgraduate research itself has got a number of uh, streams. Uh, it could mean an M, uh, master of philosophy. It could mean. Uh, MA or MSc by research. It could mean Doctor of Philosophy, that is your PhD, which itself can be done in a number of ways. It could be done through concurrent research or through publications or international PhD or being uh, coming and doing the uh, normal uh, research in the department. And of course, there is a professional doctorate. Now, to be able to get admitted into any of these different streams, the minimum is, of course, an undergraduate degree or much preferably a uh, master's degree uh, or any other professional uh, professional degree. Now, what happens here um, is um, during the uh, during the uh, the postgraduate research period, what we are looking at uh, from a student is uh, some sort of individual research. That means uh, contribution to research, and that means advancement in knowledge. Um, while while basing uh, the knowledge that you create uh, on the literature that has been uh, published thus far or the development has been done thus far and usually the admissions are we it take place within the, uh, in three times during the year the first of october the first of january and the first of april to be able to catch any of these entry points uh, all, all sort of uh, administrative tasks, such as putting the application in, and most of these applications are followed by an interview with a potential supervisor. Um, the interview, as well as the offer for a place in a postgraduate research, happens at least two months before any of these uh, entry points. That means 1st of October or 1st of January or 1st of April. And again, uh, regarding the qualifications, uh, it's, uh, it's there in the website, the details of which but uh, in a very simple way, one needs to have an upper second class uh, uh, honors uh, degree. And of course, if uh, one needs an English qualification, that is 6.5 IELTS. Now, uh, regarding the length, uh, an MPhil or uh, MPhil would be if, so you could do either full-time or part-time. 
uh, full-time MPhil is between 12 months to 24 months, and a part-time MPhil would take around 24 months to around 48 months. Uh, opposed to that, a PhD degree, if it's been done full-time, it's from three years to four years, or a part-time one would be from four years to uh, six years. And similar to that, the MA or MSc by research will be full-time 12 months to 15 months, uh, or part-time as uh, 24 to 30 months. I hope that sort of answers the question that Georgia just uh, put forward. Thank you. Thank you for that, Lipika. That was that was brilliant. Um, so the, ne the next thing that I'd like to talk about is sort of research at DMU. Um, and things, the sort of expertise that we that we have, and things that that we're doing. So obviously, I know that we've got the Stephen Lawrence Research Centre. Um, could you start off by telling us a little bit more about what that centre is and the sort of research that they do there? Okay, uh, thank you, Georgia. So I'll I'll just uh, sort of give an overview uh, of the research in DMU, and then uh, uh, answer Georgia's question more uh, more uh, deeply. So basically, in uh, in DMU, what we have uh, we have got five, uh, 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 or rather four faculties plus the Stephen Lawrence uh, Research Institute. So these faculties uh, uh, have got some research institutes under it, and usually, if a PGR student comes, uh, they will have their research aligned to either one or a multiple of these research institutes. So we are encouraging a lot of interdisciplinary research that sits between a number of these research institutes. I'll just go uh, through each of them or each faculty very, very briefly. So we have got the Arts, Design and the Humanities faculty. And within that, we have got around five research institutes where the research happens in a, in a number of range and uh, you know from architecture, sustainable cities, to dance, history, and English. And you, know, you could base your research in any of these or again, multiple of these. Then we have the business and law, which again has got eight research institutes uh, working on another, again, you know, a number of areas, economics, society, and sustainability. Sustainability comes um, or is important in every part in the MU research and uh, urban research as well. Then we have got the, uh, the Faculty of Computing um, uh, or uh, Computing Engineering and Media. And within that, we have got around 10 research institutes. We look at artificial intelligence. We, go, we look at computing and social responsible research. We look at energy. We look at, again, sustainability. Uh, we look at, uh, again, again, all music, media, all um, these sort of uh, uh, research. Then of course we have got the um, the HLS or the uh, health health and life sciences, uh, under which we have got seven research institutes where we are looking at mental health issues, pharma pharmaceuticals, and this uh, this faculty along with other faculties have been doing uh, a huge lot of research, which has then fed in to the information that we are having on COVID nineteen, etc. Then of course we have got, which sits outside all of these faculties, we have got the Stephen Lawrence Research Center and one of the primary, uh, so Stephen Lawrence uh, uh, Research Center works with all the other faculties and all works with all the other research institutes. And one of the main areas that we are looking at within this institute is inclusivity and inclusivity in all, all uh, different ways. So, and uh, when you talk about uh, very specific research, we have got things like uh, uh, any any research within DMU, we have got, uh, you know, it's for the betterment of the society. Uh, a number of research is in developing countries. We have got students from very, uh, on de from developing countries also working on uh, challenges or global challenges related to developing countries, uh, you know, electric cars, et cetera, and energy. Uh, so, you know, all all around it. I think that sort of gives you a, a, a sort of a gist of uh, what we have. Yeah. Um. In terms of, and this is just a question that, in terms of the, the sort of the research and things that you've seen in your time at DMU, what's been the most exciting or interesting research that you that you've seen, Nipka? The exciting. I think. Uh, 
uh, the work that has been going around in the Stephen Lawrence, the inclusivity, uh, the work around uh, social responsibilities. Uh, uh, again, you know, like we said, sustainability. And uh, uh, we are a huge um, uh, thing of the uh, UN Sustainable Goals. So all the work that has gone around the United Nations uh, Sustainable Goals is, I think, that's one of the most exciting uh, parts that yeah. we see. That was just that was just me being curious because I know I was wondering what because I'm imagine you've seen quite a lot of research over the years. So I was wondering which one is sort of most interesting to you. Um, so what we're going to do as well, uh, we will pop because Libka quite nicely went over all the research centres that we have. Um, so if you do want to find out a little bit more about our research institutes, there's just a little banner just below us. We'll also pop that in the comments as well so you can take a look in more detail and see if any of those sort of are aligned to your research um, interests. So, um, Lipka, one of the, and as the faculty head of research students for computing engineering and media, you will have seen that, and you're, you're very much focused on the support that we can provide to students during their time at DMU as a, as a postgraduate research student. Um, what sort of support do students get as as a research student? Uh, yes, I think that's a, that's a very important question because uh, as opposed to any other, or, you know, like the uh, taught courses, uh, research is uh, something that uh, is your own work. Uh, even though you, even if you are a part of a team, uh, the thesis that you submit at the end is it's basically yours. So. Uh, you need to work on your own but while working on your own you do need the support and it becomes much much more important when you are doing uh, uh, doing any PGR studies so what we have been hearing uh, whoever comes for admission to DMU uh, it's it's basically because of the support the academic support that they get from the supervisors the expertise of the supervisors and uh, and you do and that sort of uh, our our main strength so uh, it, it even though we do have allocated hours as supervisors but many of us go beyond beyond those uh, allocated hours to be able to you know sort of support uh, uh, in the research that our students are doing so i think that is one of the major um, major support from academically so uh, that we get so and you are not only working with a supervisor you're basically being based within one research institute so the support that you get is not only from your supervisor, but the entire team of the research institute. Uh, you are able to attend the meetings, you're able to present your work, and when presenting all your work, you get a feedback of that work, which helps you to uh, do your work better as you go on. So yes, the academic support is one of the, uh, one of the major things that uh, one gets in DMU. Apart from which, you also get the administrative support. The doctoral college is uh, it's a hugely supportive. Uh, an email or just going down to them and you get your uh, questions answered. Uh, then comes your financial support. So on the financial support end, we have a number of scholarships uh, and uh, we just finished uh, around a couple of months ago one major round of scholarship. Now the scholarship can be either, you know, mainly in two parts. One is a full bursary and one is a fee waiver. So the full bursary scholarships are usually advertised around the uh, February, March uh, time. And any applicant uh, uh, can apply by putting a statement of support and uh, about the research that they would like to do. And it's usually advised that the student talks to the potential supervisor and does this uh, research proposal together with the potential supervisor to align it to one of the one of our research strategies. And once you apply, then you then have to go through a shortlisting and an interview process, and then uh, you will be um, offered um, a full bursary. It is very, very competitive. And this time, for example, in our faculty in computing, uh, engineering and media, we got around uh, almost 300 odd applicants and we could only offer about um, uh, eight to ten uh, scholarships then of course uh, not to say that the full bursaries are the only thing then what we do is that from this uh, from this pool we then see to whom we can offer a fee waiver so just the fees are being paid while the living expenses are being borne by the uh, by the student uh, himself or herself and uh, of course uh, that student could be part-time so work 
and then uh, study uh, with us. Uh, yes, and then of course we do have got other support, for example, mental health support. We have got the uh, uh, DMU, the Students Union. You could be part of the Students Union. You could. Uh, there are a number of clubs that you could join. So it, it's not something that it's a, it's a journey. Your research journey is of course your own, but with a lot of support from all these varied things, uh, social, uh, mental, uh, you know, financial, everything. Thank you. That's perfect. Lipka, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, because you've been talking for quite a while, I'm going to take you off the screen for a second so you can have a little breather and have a little drink if you need. Um, Lipka will be coming back very, very shortly because um, we're going to start our Q&A. But as Lipka mentioned, um, even though you are a research student, you still are a student at DMU, so you do have access to everything else. So my gateway services, which help with your physical well-being and your mental well-being, um, DSU, so De Montford Students Union. Um, we have, there'll be some mature students that maybe join us. We do have a mature student society, and we do have a lot of other societies that you can get involved with. Um, so if you do have any questions, as I say, we're going to be here for the next 15 minutes, then please let us know. Um, I think I did tell Lipka it was going to be a very, very short break just to have a moment to herself. So if I can bring Lipka back. <laughs> um, hi, Lipka. Uh, Hello. So, so I think what is quite interesting, um, and one of the first questions, and it's a question that I didn't necessarily um, anticipate I was going to ask, but it was just, can you provide us a bit more information about the REF, so Research Excellence Framework? What is that? What does that mean? The Research Excellence Framework is a way in which Research England um, uh, I won't say ranks, but uh, assesses the research of a particular university. And this is uh, depending on a lot of things. It depends upon the publications that, that uh, the researchers of that university publishes, uh, the impact from those uh, publications. I'm, I'm giving in a very uh, basic way. And uh, also we do have to su submit uh, impact uh, case studies. So uh, how does our research impact or has had uh, uh, influence on the society at large or you know, environment. And depending upon what is being assessed from everything that we submit, research papers, our impact studies, uh, we are sort of you know, uh, ranked against other universities and that then uh, increases our profile mm -hmm. and uh, also uh, brings in uh, some funding to the university. And just bringing the PGR and the postgraduate research students and how they can sort of support this is basically uh, postgraduate research students. We encourage students to do uh, do work that has got actual impact rather than just theoretical, and that goes into our case studies and also the um, also the publications that they would be doing while doing the research from the findings. That again goes in as an input into the ref. Thank you very much, Lipka. If you would like to find out more about Research Excellence Framework, we do have a link that you'll see just there and we'll pop it in the comments as well. Um, so is it OK if I ask you some questions, Lipka? Um, so now these are questions that we frequently get asked by postgraduate research students or students that are looking to do a research degree. Um, so the first one, sorry, that was just something dropping. Hopefully it hasn't smashed. Um, so the first question that I have is, how do I apply for a postgraduate research program? Uh, I, um, yes, how do I apply? I think the first step uh, for anyone who is looking to apply is to look at the areas uh, where we offer, uh, or rather uh, the research uh, institutes uh, we have got and uh, try and see where he, the student uh, basically aligns with. Uh, and look at all the research that's been done in that institute or you know um, in the sort of the um, in multiple of these institutes and see what interest and what and and uh, sort of develop a, a research proposal and once you have done that then sort of look who is working in that area get in touch with that uh, that supervisor so potential supervisors then these potential supervisors will probably get in touch with you have an interview now i think why i say this is the first step because then you might have to have uh, have to talk with a number of supervisors to see with whom you align uh, your work aligns with 
And after doing that, then you can put in an application. I think uh, uh, Georgia will be able to uh, provide a link uh, to where to apply. And in this application, then you can sort of put in the research proposal that you have been working on, uh, as well as the fact that you have already spoken to a supervisor, the supervisor has interviewed you, and that uh, makes, uh, makes things much more simpler. And of course, you have to look at uh, what is the what is the fees that's available. How will you be able to support your studies? And then look for opportunities in which you'll be able to, whether it's self-funded or you are going to apply for some funding. Now, I would like to say here it's uh, that uh, with regards to funding, you don't only really have the funding from the institute itself. That is not only from the uh, from the Montford University, but you could look at various other things, and uh, and that includes charities as well as uh, as well and non uh, NGOs. So they offer a lot of uh, um, a lot of uh, funding, and especially if you're doing something which has got social impact. Thank you for that. Um, and this the sort of next question I'm going to ask you sort of follows on. Uh, quite nicely as I say um, Lipka mentioned quite rightly if you do want to apply to one of uh, our programs the link that we you just saw on the banner there um, is how you access it and we'll also pop that in the comments um, so you can find out a little bit more information so when um, when a student is making an application what sort of information do they need in the same way that what information do they need when they're applying for one of the uh, fee waivers or something like that I think um, one of the most important thing is that uh, to look at the qualification, and uh, that again is in the link that Georgia provides. Um, uh, so go to the next step only if you're qualified. Otherwise, you know uh, you'll be uh, wasting your time. So look at the basic qualification, see whether you have it, um, and then of course. Uh, I think it's very important because you'll be spending a lot of time. If it's a PhD, you'll be spending about four years on the average. And uh, it's so it should be in an area that you're really interested in, you really want to work in. And so, you know, see where uh, where you sort of fit in or where your interest lies and then look for um, what is available on our website and within Research Institute and whether we work in those areas and whether there is anyone who can supervise you in that area. Um, and then make contact and then see uh, where that can lead you. I think uh, that is one of the uh, basic things on, of the information that you need. So the, your qualifications and then your interest as in the research and see whether there is anyone who is able to um, supervise you in that area. And then things become much more simpler after that. Uh, with regards to the uh, fee waiver, again, it's an advertisement, uh, uh, sorry, the full bursary, or, uh, and it's advertised in uh, findaphd.com, as well as jobs.ac.uk, uh, as well as in our uh, DMU website. Um, so the, uh, there is a link for scholarship within the link that uh, Georgia gives you, and uh, you'll be able to follow that link to, be see, uh, to see when uh, scholarships are available and when it is. Thank you, Lipka. So my next question, you oh, sorry, just a little bit of feedback. Um, but that's okay, we've sorted it now. Um, so my next question, Lipka, um, and you have answered it a little bit. So my question was, how do I find a supervisor? But I am going to change it slightly. If a student is struggling to find a supervisor, um, is there any support there for them to help them find? So for example, could a student in computer engineering and media come and speak to you and you, could you recommend people they may not have thought of originally yes of course uh, so if um, if uh, a applicant is uh, unable to find a supervisor uh, from whatever is available on our websites and a staff profile that is there uh, one can always uh, look at the research institute and then we have got uh, the um, email addresses of the directors of the research institute so you can write directly to the research institute saying that or a multiple of the research institutes or to uh, any of the faculty head of research students uh, such as myself i think i'm happy to give my uh, email address uh, or you know uh, and uh, you could get in touch with any of us um, also the doctoral college is a big help there uh, so if you approach a doctoral college, the doctoral college will sort of see where your um, where your research interest lies and they will forward your application uh, to the uh, research uh, sort of the research institute that aligns with your interest. And then we try and support uh, and find a supervisor for you. 
uh, with whom you can then take the next dialogue ahead. Thank you, Lipka. Um, yeah, the doctoral college are great. So we, what we're going to do is we're going to pop a link to where the doctoral college um, and all their information. They have information on sort of how to apply and how to write proposals. They're really great help. So we'll put you in contact with them if you need any further information. Um, but it's great to see that there is all that support for postgraduate research students. Um, now, again, as I've mentioned, I know you are a um, computer engineer and media academic. So the next question I'm going to ask you may be quite specific to the, to those students, but are there any examples of current PGR projects, uh, PGR research that is, that, that is happening at the moment from students? Uh, yes, uh, so there are a number of students working on, uh, in this area, they're working on autonomous vehicles, uh, looking at uh, um, how updates to autonomous vehicles take place, um, like software updates. So there is a huge area there. Then again, um, you know, depending upon the um, on which area it is, there is one. I think I can read out the uh, the thesis title of the uh, of our thesis prize winner. I think uh, so. That was a uh, long term effects of thermal variation on the performance of balanced twisted pair uh, calding. So it's very specific to networking. Uh, but the work that the, the student did uh, earned her a uh, thesis prize in uh, 2020. Uh, there can be a number of others. If I uh, uh, so, and there is again a number uh, of uh, our research, which uh, again, like I said, it deals with um, uh, deals with developing countries. So there is one here on cybersecurity, which uh, identity theft investigation and evaluation of the methods of identity theft investigation in Nigeria. Then one, which is again, not in the uh, CHEM, but rather in um, uh, business administration, where they're looking at uh, control systems in uh, internal control systems in SMEs. So yes, there is, uh, there is quite a number that, uh, that uh, we are working on at the moment. Uh, film studies, such as looking at uh, film festivals, like the Hong Kong film, film festivals, et cetera. So yes. It really surprises me, like the the breadth of research that we do. It's, it's really it's, it's so it's interesting, yes. um, and it is. And like you say, there is something that sort of fits into the, anyone's sort of research um, if they just if they just look a little bit. Um, so the next question I have for you, Lipka, is what is the deadline for applications for postgraduate research? Uh, Again, I think uh, the actual deadline I may not be able to say because it sort of varies. Uh, but if you are aiming uh, for, say, for example, the 1st of October uh, entry, then you should have finished everything two months before. So putting in your application, getting your interview done, getting the offer. So I would say uh, putting in the application should be at least three months before each of these entry points. So if it's an October, 1st of October entry point, the application should have gone in by the beginning of July. Uh, and then similarly, uh, 1st of January, just think back three months, finish up everything. And uh, uh, similar again for the 1st of April would be beginning of January, you should have applied uh, for that. Then uh, uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's a reason for that, uh, especially for international students. There's a lot to do with visa. There's a lot to do with uh, you know financial uh, finances, everything. So we need that time. Thank you for that. Um, so the next question I've got, and I think we've touched on it a little bit, but it'd be good to get a bit more. So can um, a student study part time or does, uh, do their research, does their research have to be their full time job? No, they can study part time and uh, quite a number of uh, students opt for that. Uh, doing a part-time and uh, by doing a part-time you can take a little bit longer for example uh, for a PhD the maximum amount of time that you could do it in in six years as opposed to four years if you're doing full-time so uh, and all the others for example the MA by um, MA, MA and MSc by research or your master of philosophy everything can be done uh, part-time and then uh, you can take slightly uh, longer time uh, if you're doing it part time and then if you're doing it part time, you do not necessarily need to be based in Leicester or uh, do not need to come in into the um, into the institute. And from the support point of view, I think we are very much used to uh, communicating with a student via Skype. So meetings, etc. are not not an issue at all. Uh, so um, 
yes, you can do it part time while you're working or having other responsibilities. Thank you for that, Lipka. We have a question, um, and I'm not sure if you'll be able to answer this, Lipka. I will ask it you. If you can't answer it, don't worry. We'll point Derek in the right direction. Um, so Derek is looking to start a master's in engineering in part time course. Um, are there any additional labs or clubs that he can subscribe to that will help with his projects and assignments? I'm only asking you this question because you are part of CHEM, so I don't know if you'll have some insider knowledge yes. that you'll be able to give us. Yes, uh, uh, yes, I think I will be able to, I do not, okay, so we do not have, I don't know which engineering uh, Derek wants to think, but in general, we have got a robotics club uh, that runs, uh, uh, well, with the COVID situation, it's a slightly thing, but before the COVID situation, I think it was every, uh, every week or uh, in the evening one or one of the weekdays, we have a robotics club that runs um, a couple of hours and it's led by students and overlooked by staff members. We also have a Formula One uh, club where uh, students at any level, undergraduate, postgraduate and, uh, uh, and uh, research students, they get in together, they develop this uh, uh, Formula One and then take it for competitions, etc. In the same way, we have got other clubs, uh, which I think I cannot think of any more on the top of my head, but we do have got some more. But yes, That's we there are a lot of clubs. That's perfect. Thank you. Hopefully that There's answers one your question. as well, I think. Uh, yes. Hopefully that answers your question, Derek. So thank you very much. Um, Lipka, I'm going to ask you one more question before we wrap up. I hope that's okay. Um, so with everything, and we have touched on it slightly just just then, with everything that's going on, how will will, will there be any changes to um, a student's postgraduate research journey due to COVID-19? Uh, seeing what we have, I'll not go to what we had, uh, you know, sort of uh, with the existing students. With the current students, whoever is coming in in October or uh, January, uh, they, uh, I think many of the students will be able to work from home. Uh, and even if they need to come in into the, and of course, uh, many uh, many of the research needs lab access and specialist equipment. And there are uh, you know, facilities in place at the moment in which students can come in to do their research while social distancing, while making sure that, uh, uh, that all, uh, health issues are being taken care of. Uh, with regards to uh, supervisory meetings, uh, we will, you know, it depends upon person to person. If it's socially distancing, they prefer doing it face-to-face, uh, uh, -face, they can do it. But most of us are continuing with, uh, uh, with remote supervision that is over Skype or MS Teams and things like that. So everything will go on with uh, with the care uh, of social distancing and other uh, health facilities uh, put in place. Yeah, perfect. I hope that the so, yeah, uh, I'm, yes, it's quite general. Yeah. You know, no, that's perfect. Um, it is worth adding as well um, that our campus has currently undergone a bit of a transformation. So there is a lot of um, one way um, pathways onto the campus, there is sanitizer points all over the campus as well just to everything that we can do to adhere to those uh, government safety guidelines and make sure that everyone feels safe um i think that's all we have time for today so i would like to say a massive thank you to dr lipka decker for joining us today and um, answering the questions that we have thank you everybody for watching um, if you do have any more questions about postgraduate research you can either get in touch with the doctoral college um, and they'll be able to help you or other than that, we do have another postgraduate online chat that will be happening today between from four till six. Um, so we'll also post where you can find out a bit more information about that if you'd like to have a chat with one of our advisors. Um, if not, I wish you all a lovely day um, and hope to see you soon. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.